This is Methat al Masri. Today we will explore server side caching in ASP.NET 6.0. What is caching? Well, caching refers to the process of storing frequently used data so it can be served much faster for any future requests. So we take the most frequently used data and copy it into temporary storage so that it can be accessed much faster in future calls from the client. There are two important terms used with cache, cache hit and cache miss. A cache hit occurs when data can be found in cache and cache miss occurs when data cannot be found in cache. Consider this API that we're going to be using today. And this API is at this endpoint. Now, if we go there, it will return to us about 70 plus records of data. You can see here number 77. And each item of data consists of this. We will just look into the ID, the quantity, the unit price, and the name. For today's demo, we will ignore everything else. The reality is when you make a request to the application for products, your application goes off and makes a request to another endpoint to get the data. That takes time. You can imagine that sometimes our web applications make use of other services like weather forecasting, like stock prices. So they go to other services. It could be an API, it could be a database, but going somewhere else has its penalty and we call that latency. There's a waiting time before the time when you make the request and the time you get the response. The benefit of caching is if there is data that doesn't change all that much, for example, this data rarely changes. It would be nice if we can save this data locally in cache to save on the latency penalty of making an online request for the data. This can be achieved by doing some ASP.NET server-side caching. Let's see how this works. I will be using simple VS Code as my editor and also the command line tools. So I'm going to go into a terminal window and in this window, I will create a Razor Pages application with this command. So I have here .NET new Razor the framework I want to use is 6.0. I'm turning HTTPS off because I really don't need it for the demo. And the output directory is going to be data cache demo. I will go into that directory. And in here, I'm going to make a directory called models because I will be creating a model in the models folder. I can open my app in VS Code with code dot. In the models folder, I will create a new class called product. Since I'm interested only in four properties in the JSON object, I will be creating this class here with properties ID, quantity, unit price, and name only. So let me resolve this namespace here. So let's read the product data from the API endpoint. I will use the index page, which is the landing page for our application. In index.cshtml.cs, which is the code behind page, I'm going to open that and add a bindable property that represents an array of products. I will add that at the very top of my class. This needs to be resolved and you can see here that I've got an array of product objects. It's nullable. The name is products and it's a bind property. Next, I will add a helper method here that actually reads the data and returns it in an array of product objects. So I have here a method called get products async. It works asynchronously because you can see async here. I instantiate an HTTP client object. Using the HTTP client object, I make a request to this endpoint. 
it returns a stream object. With the JSON serializer, which needs to be resolved here, I call the deserialize async method on an array of products, and the stream is used here to deserialize the data into an array of product objects, which gives me this product list, and I just return the product list. So all I need to do is to call this method and pass on the data to my view so it can be displayed on the home page. So let's go to the onGet method here. This is the default method that actually feeds the index page. It does not work asynchronously, so I will delete it and replace it with an asynchronous method that looks like this. Public async, it's got task instead of void and on get. Here is where I call the get products async method because I want to measure how long the response takes to come from the server. I declare a time t1 here. I call the method that gets me the data and then I declare another time t2. Here I evaluate the duration between t1 and t2 by subtracting t1 from t2 and then I display the duration in milliseconds. At this point I'm calling my get products async method which returns an array of products and I assign that array to my bindable products object which was declared up here. Let's go to the view file for the home page which is index.cshtml and I will delete the contents of this and replace it with this. So what have we got here? Basically, we're using this index model, which is this one right here. And the title of our page is Northwind Products List. We will display the title of our page here. And we're going to use a bootstrap table. The class is table and it's going to be striped. These are the table titles. And as far as the data is concerned, we're going to iterate through the products collection, which is bindable, which was declared here. And for every item, we will display the ID, the name, the quantity per unit and the unit price. So let's run this application and see what it looks like. Back in the terminal window, we'll do .NET watch. This is what our data looks like. We've got here 77 rows of data. Let's go down here and have a look at how long this request has taken. It has taken 1,183 milliseconds to complete. Let us make use of server-side caching such that data received from the API endpoint is cached for a certain period of time. In order to use data caching in ASP.NET, we need to go into the program.cs file and add a service. And you would do that right before this builder build statement. And this is the service, add memory cache. Next, we will use dependency injection in order to use memory cache. So you go back into index.cshtml.cs and in here, we will inject this object through dependency injection. We'll add this read only I memory cache. This is the object that we need. I'm going to resolve it. And in here, we will use the same object, inject it in the constructor, memory cache. And we'll assign underscore memory cache to memory cache in the constructor. Let's replace our get products async method so that it uses caching. I will replace this method with an updated method that actually uses caching. And this is what it looks like. The signature of the method hasn't changed, but what we've done here is added a key. You can call it whatever you like. In this case, I'm calling it a product list. You're going to check whether this cache key exists. This method memory cache try get value. The output is an array product objects, which we call product list. Here, this logic hasn't changed. 
this section is important. This is where you configure your cache options. In this case, it's a new memory cache entry options. It's got three parts to it. The first part is the absolute expiration. We're saying here that every 50 seconds, this cache needs to be refreshed. The second part is priority. And what does priority mean? Well, if you abuse caching on a web server and you cache everything, the server is bound to run out of memory. So it is going to remove some of your caching. Here you help the server determine what's important and what's not important. So the values for cache priority are high, low, never remove, normal. High means this is high priority, don't remove it if possible. Low means if it's removed, it doesn't matter. Normal is in between. Never remove means never remove this cache. So let's set it to high for the time being. Then there is this sliding expiration. What does that mean? It actually means that if it's not being requested for 20 seconds, then after 20 seconds, it's going to be removed. How do you compare these two? This absolute expiration, sliding expiration. If the page is not being accessed, the cache is removed after 20 seconds. In the case of absolute expiration, whether or not the page is being used, it doesn't matter. Every 50 seconds, it's going to be refreshed. That's the difference. Here we set the memory cache. So we're saying that to this key, we're going to add this data with these options. Here, for our purposes, I'm going to display a message in our terminal window to say that data is being read from the API. In other words, it's a cache miss. Otherwise, it's going to be read from the cache itself. And this method returns, of course, a list of products. But I want you to pay attention here. This list of products is being declared here as an output to this if statement. So it's available for us to use here. We just redefined the way that our get products async works. At this point, it is using caching. The next thing we want to do is try it out. Let's see how it works. So I'm going to stop the server .NET watch again, just to make sure that it's clean. So as I refresh my page, you will see the data now is being read from the cache. Whereas it took 290 milliseconds at first, in subsequent requests, it's taking much less than that, as you can see. So this is the benefit of caching. I hope you use caching in your web applications to make them perform much more efficiently. Cheers, and I'll see you in the next video.